Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday live stream. So we actually did a uh, live stream today with uh, the fellas, Guy over at Coin Bureau and Ben at End of the Cryptoverse. There's a link in the description. This was on uh, Guy's channel at uh, Coin Bureau Clips. And we talked about a host of things. It was a really good conversation. You know, we went over the Ethereum ETF. We talked about politics. We talked about where things are going as far as the, the, the direction of the market. And yeah, we touched on a little Bitcoin dominance, but uh, pretty good discussion. Links in the description. You can check out that video. I enjoyed this one. It was uh, it was pretty good times. But uh, I will say one thing as a little little light humor here, which is that uh, I sometimes actually no, I, I, I'm going to go back. I do check the comment section all the time. Uh, for for my channel and uh, when I'm on somebody else's channel, just to see how things are. If I can improve something, get something better, or I miss something. And let me tell you, uh, comment sections are great. And on this one, uh, there was a really good comment. I thought it was uh, uh, apt. This is from uh, Psylikey Pizza. And he states, uh, Rob is like that one dumb friend in a friend group that sticks around because everyone is too nice to kick him out. And to Psylikey si Pizza, I just have this to say. That was pretty funny. So uh, I put that on the tweets and uh, hey, can't please everybody. So today, the question is about uh, Solana because I mean, we've heard a lot of things about Ethereum ETF. Looks like we had quite a whirlwind over the last uh, 48 to 72 hours. And uh, today would be the final day for uh, it to be approved. Now, if it gets approved, at some point uh, during the stream, I will definitely point that out. But so far, uh, nothing to report. But this was a good little little snippet. Uh, this is from, uh, actually, this is from Guy, uh, Guy's, Guy's account over on X. And he states it pretty logically. He says, look, if the SEC approves ETH ETFs, which, of course, the first one was Bitcoin, the proof of work. Now, if we go to ETH for their proof of stake, he states there'd be very little legal grounds to deny applications of other altcoins. Could Sol be next? And I just want you to take a listen to this. This is like 53 seconds or so. This is, I think, is on uh, MSNBC as they make the point of what's going on. So let me just uh, make sure that you can hear this correctly. Go to the uh, audio. Just take a listen, about 50 seconds or so. Pop, pop. The SEC is starting to amend these S1s. Uh -huh. So I don't know if the Ethereum ETF gets approved today, you know, next week or the I week heard. after. It will get approved at some point in time. But also the trade now is who's next, right? Exactly. Who's who is next? Because, well, it, it, you know, yeah. and, and I was talking about yesterday. Now it's almost time for truly my my ETF, my blended ETF of which, you know, yep. which crypto asset it is. And, and so who is next, though? I mean, I think you've got to think about Solana as probably the next one, right? I mean, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Solana are probably the big three for this cycle. Um, but I'll give you even a stranger or maybe not stranger, but a, maybe an unintuitive way to think about it. Robinhood and Coinbase. Because now we have some clarity about what a security is and what isn't. And they'll be able to list a lot more crypto, which means a lot more trading for them. So I think they're the biggest beneficiaries from the change that's gone on. So, BK, really glad to have you here. BK. So, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And then to get into it, as far as like Solana, because people say, well, you know, there was no, there was no futures. There was, you know, Ethereum had futures, Bitcoin had futures. No, there's no futures for for Solana right now, and you know what? You're absolutely correct. And then also, if you're talking about ETPs, there's already, already projects out there. There's already the availability. This is from uh, Hunter Horsley, I'm saying I said his name right. He's a CEO at Bitwise Investment, three billion assets under management. He says, look, imagine a fund that held mostly Bitcoin, some Ethereum, and Solana, and a bit of the other top seven, a fund that rebalances quarterly with screens, which I like. I like the whole thing about rebalancing your portfolio. So you don't have to buy every new ETF as things change. The fund is here. Meet the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, Bitwise, B-I-T-W. Now I link this in the description. You can check it out. You can follow Hunter and ask him all the questions that you wanna do. So it's not a stretch of the imagination as different people are coming out and saying, yeah, I think people would like to have Solana. And then lastly, because it really comes down to this, wants and desires, right? Just because one, of course, the first ETF was proof of work. Second ETF, hopefully, will be proof of stake. Maybe Ethereum, maybe maybe gets shot down. It's looking pretty positive so far. But if it does come through, really, it comes down to how much demand is it? Because let me be honest with you. I don't think there's going to be a lot of demand for like tomato coin. Let's just call it. I know some people say, what about Dogecoin? Look, nobody in the near term is asking for a Dogecoin ETF. Maybe they do. I've been wrong before. 
But if I take a look at some, just some data points, this is from CoinShares, ETPs, Digital Asset Fund Flows, May 20th, 2024. And this is a weekly publication that they put out as far as a blog post. And you can just see, I don't really care so much about this, Bitcoin, and we're talking about flows and assets under, assets under management. Bitcoin saw 942 million of inflows with virtually no flows into short Bitcoin. What I want you to notice as far as assets under management for these ETPs, or the different flows that are out there, you can see that Bitcoin is far and away the best. This is in millions, right? So 72,000, 72 billion dollars. And the second one you may notice is Solana, just putting it out there. Chainlink 49, Cardano 63, Filecoin 8, short Bitcoin 106, all right, 155 for Litecoin. And down we go, oh, Binance 588, interesting. And then Ethereum 12.9. So we can just see that as far as institutions and people wanting to for or clamoring for the next big product, it could be Solana. And imagine what would happen with the price of Solana moving forward. I'm not saying that, you know, Solana's is like the best thing of all time. Other people will make that assumption and they will talk about that. I'm just telling you what the demand is right now, the asset center management and where we can go forward. And that is all predicated on the fact of if we even get this Ethereum ETF, which again, is looking positive. But uh, as, as I remind everybody, 72, 96 hours ago, uh, everybody had this dead in the water. It wasn't going to pass and all of a sudden, flip a switch and now here we are. So things can change in a dime. We'll see how it works out. I mean, what you think about that in the comments section. And also, I wanna give a shout out to the XRP Army and Ripple for really sticking it out there and uh, battling the SEC alone, pretty much. And I wanna give credits due. This was, this is uh, Paul Gruel. And he is the uh, chief legal officer at Coinbase. And he put out this statement, XRP is now trading on Coinbase in New York. The reason why this is such a big thing is because New York has heavy regulation and they have a, you have a real hard time listing anything, doing anything there. It's a real pain in the A. And they said, you know what? We believe that XRP is not a security. We've already gone to court. We've already battled with the SEC. Things are looking pretty good. So they're gonna open it up to New York. So congratulations to the XRP holders, XRP Army for having yet another win and pushing things forward. I like to see that, that is great stuff, congratulations. And then uh, one more thing, uh, talking about Paul. We talked about this yesterday and I actually jumped the gun on yesterday's video. Yesterday's video, we were talking about the uh, FIT21 bill, which would delegate power essentially from the SEC, more so to the CFTC and a host of other different provisions that were brought forth, which was positive for crypto and I said, first of all, I said it passed. And I, and I said it passed in the narrowest of margins, but that was just the provision. That was just to get to the vote of, of the day. And lo and behold, two hours later, it actually did pass, but it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. So I was wrong on yesterday's video about the margin between Democrats and Republicans. Actually, a lot of Democrats actually uh, voted for this to pass. So that's great. So I was wrong on that one, but it did pass, so that's pretty good. But uh, he states, let, let this sink in. 71 House Democrats join Republicans. And let me tell you, uh, lately bills have been, the different bills that are trying to go on, have gone through Congress, the House or the Senate, it's, they were usually voting on party lines, just right down the middle. So the House has, has more Republicans right now. Senate looks like the tiebreaker will be the uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. And besides crypto, they've been voting straight down the line of party, which means that if the Republicans put through, they usually pass things on the House and it gets shot down in the Senate or President vetoes it. But in this one, 71 House Democrats jumped over. They jumped over and they voted for this bill to go through FIT21 which will allow CFTC to move forward. Now, Gary wasn't too happy. He put out and said, this would be a very bad thing to do. But if you wanna sum everything up uh, in one picture, this is it. Uh, as Democrats start to realize that, oh, this crypto thing, this digital asset thing, this Bitcoin thing, people really are in touch with it and we are out of touch they're starting to realize that if they don't do the things that their constituents want them to do, 
which is be positive for crypto digital assets, they're going to hurt in the next primaries, in the next midterm elections. So it seems like everybody's pivoting, except for Elizabeth Warren. We'll see how that works out. Go John Deaton. But uh, I think this is a step in the right direction, especially as Democrats are pivoting and actually listening to the people of what's going on. And then lastly, I just want to give, uh, just want to talk real quick. I discovered this last night. I was uh, on our, talking to a couple of, uh, of individuals and projects on Telegram, as I sometimes do. And I found this, uh, it's called Play Deck Bot. Play Deck Bot. And what it is, is just a bunch of games. It's just a bunch of games in Telegram. That's all it is. And, and of course, they're free. And no, I don't know them. And no, they didn't give me a kickback or something. I just was, I was fascinated because I could go through Telegram. I could download these games. I didn't have to go through Apple or Android. I have, a, I have an iPhone. And I thought to myself, it's interesting. It's like they're almost trying to, you know, do their own thing and maybe sidestep Apple and maybe get something done. So anyhow, I linked this in the description. You can check it out for the games. The games are very simple. They're a time waster. You know, you're standing in line, you want to do something cool, whatever. But I think there's other apps to come forward. And I was taking a look at TonCoin. I've missed, I missed TonCoin. I just totally missed it. It rocketed in the top 10. It's in the top 10 right now. It's ranked 10. Uh, circulating supply, 3 billion, 474 million, 575,000. Total supply is 5 billion. So there's still some, it looks like maybe locked up. Or, and over 24 hours, it's down 4%. Over seven days, it's down 7%. And if you max out and look at it, I mean, in the peak of the bull market, it was only four bucks. And of course, they unlock some things. But right now, it's eh, about six bucks. Four bucks is six bucks. I'm just saying, might be something to look at especially if they're trying to sidestep one of the biggest, largest companies in the entire world and do their own thing. And to further bring this point home, I'd like you to watch this video. I link this in the description. This is the Tucker Carlson interview. This is with the founder of Telegram. I always forget his name, uh, Pavel Durov. And the things he talks about as far as government suppression, what he was asked to do, not just by... Uh, the Russian authorities, which was amazing that they said, you know, forget you, I'm not going to do it, but also by the FBI and the poaching for the development. I mean, it's a wild, it's a wild story. And because of, and because of this interview, Tucker Carlson actually got a uh, Telegram account. I'm just saying, if you're for liberty and to do all these things, and you're looking for maybe the next big thing. This could be, TonCoin could be it. And then lastly, before we get into Q&A, I just got this email this morning. And uh, it's straight up scams. So just be aware that anybody that sends you an email and asks you for, to put in your private keys or to click away to go to another website or to give them information, uh, the rules are right below me. And those rules are not just so I can waste my breath. It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Everything is a scam until proven otherwise. I'm a scam until you have to do your own research and prove what I just said. Don't leave any exchanges, don't use leverage, take profits along the way, and that's it for today. So look, that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by, I appreciate it. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up, because they're subscribing. Now, if you wanna stick around and talk a little Q&A, let's do that. We're only gone in 13 minutes, I think we've got a couple minutes to go from there. If you gotta take off, take off, I appreciate you.